to be All right. Done. Well, then, let's call this meeting to order, if you could, uh, for the master board. Uh, by the roll call. Tom Martinez. Adam Goldstone. Noah Huber. <coughs> Andy yes. Elmer is late getting here. Go ahead, Captain. Assistant Chief Michelle Goldman. Sorry. Assistant Fire Marshal Mark Sampson. Uh, Assistant Chief Building Official Mark Mapet. Uh, plans Examiner for Building Services, Taryn Stewart. And Building Official Blas Hernandez. Very good. Uh, we have a quorum here with the, the two members. Uh, Andy is uh, late getting here, but he'll get here. Uh, we want to discuss the adoption of the proposed 2024 International Codes and Amendments. So I'll refer this to uh, Chief Hernandez. Thank you, and welcome everybody. And um, this year is a little different than previous years or previous code cycles. As you might, or if you may or may not have heard, the International Residential Code and the International Energy Code were delayed for last minute changes. And those were not available until August, I think it was. And therefore, that's going to delay our entire adoption. Okay. We, we are actually in the process of creating amendments for electrification. I think you may have heard of that. Well, the city, the, the, the city council decided not to go to full electrification because uh, there's been some lawsuits. Because if you think about it, you're taking away a person's ability to decide whether or not they want to use gas or not. And right now, uh, there are cities who are in lawsuits. And with that, the city council decided they didn't want to go full electric. Okay, but we will work on amendments to be in line with the state energy code. The state of Colorado now is in the energy business. Okay, so they are creating um, more energy codes that we have to follow. Um, we're going to go in front of city council and we're going to ask for guidance because. If we're going to wait for the energy code to be uh, finalized, that that's going to be uh, May 1st is the, the final draft when it's completed, and September is when it's actually approved. I just talked to Jim Pate from Broomfield. He's on the board. He said, "Blast! Don't don't expect that to be done until sometime in September." And so, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to go in front of the city council. We're going to say, "Hey, listen." Do you want us to go ahead and push this through to adopt whatever we can? Or do you want us to wait until we the uh, the energy state energy code is completed? I mean we can do either or. Is it on. the state code loss that you're waiting That's for? That's the state code, yeah. The Not state. ICC code. Correct. No, the state's low carbon. Okay. Yeah, they have a low carbon and that's gonna be we have to follow that. Once, right. once that's approved. It becomes our code, uh, and so um, that's kind of where we are. So what we can do tonight, if you want, is we can talk a little bit about the uh, and, and the and the other question I wanted to ask is we don't have all of the amendments finalized, and and a lot of these that we're waiting for are going to be the uh, energy code amendments. Okay. Now, if you guys want to reconvene and come back again and to review those one more time, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to do that. Or, say, just notify us of the changes. I mean, uh, I don't have an answer as to whether or not the Master Board has to approve our code amendments before it moves on to City Council. I, of course, it goes for adoption. Before be, it, before is that goes part of our... Is that, all, is that our state or our city requirement? Correct. Okay. Correct. So, with that being said, uh, we we want to get just a little feedback on what we're doing on on the on the codes, and I believe fire pretty much have your codes, your amendments finalized. So, uh, we'll we'll talk about the codes that we're thinking about adopting, and then once we figure out how city council wants us to move forward on the electrification codes, we'll finalize those, 
but it may be later because I'm not for sure what they're going to tell us. If they want us to go ahead and move without it, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get those later. Or, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, wait for the state energy code to be complete before you guys before you guys adopt the energy codes. So block is up an interesting point, and we have not had this internal discussion yet, but we will as far as timing. Because when, when the... We're ready and fired, like he said, mm -hmm. um, and then we're, we're looking at things like where there's overlap, the building code for sure, residential code for sure, property maintenance code perhaps, what else, mm -hmm. um, existing, building. existing building codes. So we could, we could move forward with a lot of these, so this meeting is not really just for naught, if you will. I think it's important to do it, because there may be a bunch that moves forward. So, Well, the question I have to ask, uh, again, look, look at the big 10,000 foot picture. What is the public opinion at this point of these proposed changes that we're talking about? Because, you know, one of the things we're, we're seeing, and I don't know about what you guys in your trades, but at, at our level here, we're seeing challenges from locations obtaining sufficient power to make the changes in total electrification. Uh, Excel Energy does not have the power in their grids to do what the ICC is, a, is, is right now is proposing. And so the question would be, are, are we even having these open discussions or references with, the, with the, the general public as to how they feel? Because it's going to impact everybody when all of a sudden it, became, it becomes a code requirement that you have a UV connection, you know, or an EV connection. I mean, it's, it's, you know, I know that there was talk at one of our meetings about that, that there was to make a requirement potentially of having an EV connection in every new residence. That's a lot of power you got to bring to that, but property at whose expense and how you're going to power this grid. You know, and this is why you know, I, 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 again, personally, again, I, and I maybe should speak out of turn, but I, I'm just concerned that going this direction, you know, the carbon footprint you talk about blocks, I, I can't tell you how many phone calls I get in a week about that very code reference and the challenges we're seeing with people manipulating safety controls on equipment because they can't meet the emission standards that DPHE has, has put out. And we're going to see somebody get seriously injured with equipment failure because of what the state is trying to emphasize. And DPHE has got the manpower and the teeth to come in and assess fines on these businesses. They're, they have a big audit going right now out of Amgen, or, or whatever they're called now. Uh, in Boulder, yeah, yeah, exactly. In Boulder, they've, they've, they've threatened to shut down all their boilers because they meet the emission standards. And so we, we caught their, their chief maintenance guy in the blade controls and bypass the safety controls. I had a come to Jesus discussion. You cannot do that because you're going to kill somebody. And so, you know, we just wonder how far do you go with this to where it becomes um, not user friendly and counterproductive to some society. <coughs> uh, I, I well, so I can say that um, a lot of the council um, meetings that I've been to recently, there have been a few um, people have gone up and spoke uh, against yeah. the education. I haven't heard anybody. Anybody of the public actually speak forward yet? Um, that and talking with LPC, the Longwell Power, right? Um, with with it only being new homes, new subdivisions. Um, from what I understand, they expect they would be able to handle that in newer subdivisions. So only what are they are putting in new infrastructure, right. essentially? Right. I think the, the other thing that comes with that that we're dealing with, um, you know, we talked about it at the last code cycle about whether require solar, when, when the place is put on the solar, right, that obviously adds, you know, or reduces the demand on the grid, right? right? And so I think they kind of go hand in hand. So we may have to address that sooner than later about solar requirements just to help offset that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where that's at as well as solar requirements. Yeah, because, you know, we're going to hear about it from the public, you know, and especially at the national board, they're going to be able to send out applications, hey, I don't want to do this, I want a variance against what you're making me do. And I, bet, I imagine, and I basically kind of want to bloss has said what if what he's hearing from them is that they're going to handle a lot like they've done residential sprinklers, right? Which is they're going to probably delay parts of the that requirement, and they'll probably allow some. Like we we have townhouses now, but it took us what that was approved in oh nine. It was in the IRC in, in oh nine. Or the first three. time it came in, oh three or oh nine code. It was oh nine. It was oh nine, I think. And we didn't get even townhouses or duplexes until 18. Yeah. 
So, I mean, I would imagine that is the steps you will see. And we still don't have the requirement for single family, which is in ours. So I would imagine they would step stone it. Yeah. But because your group, so you would know better, right? Most of the people applying are, are developers right now, right? The big contractors. So, I mean, if they're not going to complain on that level, how many individuals? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Actually, this is why I brought it up, because at some point in time, some individual homeowner is going to say, wait a minute. Does this apply to me? And if so, I need to get a variance applied because I can't afford what it's going to take to put this in. You know, so you, yeah, you know, I mean, at, at some point in time, you got to set parameters to grandfather stuff in. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, so, everybody does. as our jurisdiction uh, at the university has been uh, enforcing the or applying is the right word. There's no enforcement. There's pl there's no enforcement. That's an old, old discussion. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> no, I mean at the state level, there's no enforcement. I'm we've asked that question. Yeah. We, we've well, asked. They don't the, they, well, they can't. They don't. Well, have, they can. I, the last, not, I've been in the room with the guy who's chairing the Colorado Model Energy Code development, and I said to the, I asked the question. I said, so, so we do plan review, and we we sort of monitor our own process because we're we're good citizens. But what if you know? Like who? Who do we turn that into? Nobody. Yeah. So that's another thing. What I what I what I can say is a couple of things. We've been in this. There's a there's a Colorado model energy code. It's been in force since the first of this year. Um, as jurisdictions, the way it's and it's written, it's based off of legislation. Legislation passed, I believe it was in 22. So it's in the Colorado Code of Regulations, right? That sort of has this process. When a jurisdiction adopts new codes, it is then subjected to that uh, continuing resolution. Which is one of the things that I wanted to bring up here. We're talking about picking up the 24 cycle. This is gonna, it, it kicks in. The city may want, I, I don't know what tools are available to the city to delay or offset, but, but in terms of the state written uh, regulations, it's there. The um, the process, the, the Colorado Model Energy Code has three parts. It's solar panels, it is electric ready, which, may, which means empty space. It's not a component, it's empty space. In your mech room, for yeah. example, it's, a, it's an empty raceway for a future thing. And then it's EVs, right? It's those three things. That's really what it is. Um, and it has a very vague exception clause in there that allows, that, that states that, um, <clears throat> number one, the, the, the first thing is there's a variance for um, if you get a price that says, in order to affect the uh, model energy codes, it's going to raise the cost of my project by more than 1%. 1%? You're out. You can, you can apply and say it's, it's too much. It's going to raise my, it's going to raise my cost. It's really low. And then there's another, there's another clause which we've um, taken, taken and framed it in the best possible light for us, which is that the jurisdiction gets to decide what a, quote, major, it's like new stuff. It's like, it's all new stuff. So to, your, to gentleman's point about um, developers. But the other thing is, the other clause is major renovation. It's like only if you do a major renovation, and does it tell you what a major renovation is? No. So, as an example, the University of Colorado, Colorado says a major renovation is when you are, when your project is valued at more than half of the replacement cost of your facility. Right? So That's where we use 50%. Mm -hmm. So if your facility is worth 10 million bucks to build, like is an insurance claim, right? If you're not, if you're if you're renovating something that costs five million bucks, then it kicks in. Otherwise, it doesn't kick in. It doesn't kick in. It doesn't. It just doesn't. So if you're adding, even if let's say you have a, a a million dollar house in Longmont, which I'm sure there's quite a fair number of those in Longmont, and you want to add a two hundred thousand dollar garage to your house, you're good. Yeah. You're you're clean. Right, you don't have to do anything. You have to do literally nothing. So the model, so that model energy code has this giant. If you're applying it in a in a 
intentional way, it has holes in it the size of buses. It does. <coughs> so, now, Tim Pate's working on another round. No idea what that contains, right? I don't know what that contains. That's the new and improved. It's called the low carbon kit. So, so that, from my understanding early on, because we're, we're, we're on that bandwagon too already, um, it's, it's a huge amount about concrete. It is like all about concrete, for sure. And then where you get your steel. <coughs> right. um, I'm not sure about shipping and whatnot, but that's a whole other, that's a, that's a whole separate thing. And the whole, the low carbon code might be way stickier than the model energy codes are. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Well, and, and to your point, you know, the oil is, is unfortunate. You know, I mean, it, 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 that's when it goes to the state level. Because they're the only ones who got the teeth, the VAGs behind it. Otherwise, the local jurisdictions look at you, you guys have to enforce stuff like that. Well, once we, it becomes an ordinance, we have strong enforcement ability, but you are correct. The state can't really enforce much. No. They might. They might I mean, if you're if you're applying for a project that uses state money, they might withhold it. Withhold it. That's the only thing I can imagine. Or if someone comes in and says, "Hey, you made that contractor of, uh, of comply, and you made this one over here not, right?" Or they choose the other around. You didn't let you didn't make them comply, but you make me comply. So mm -hmm. now I'm going to go to the state and complain about you, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's a, I'm sure there's a, a recourse, but it, it has to probably be a pretty high bar. There's probably you have to get someone pretty upset first, yeah. right? As usual. Yeah. Now, well, the state decided that they wanted to get into the energy regulation business, and so when these codes come out, as part of a, it, it, it will become a requirement. Right. And, and cities have no choice; they have to adopt those regulations. And I would say it's much easier for a city especially the city of our size, to enforce these regulations, then it would be a, a, a smaller city or somebody who's not even in a city, just somebody who's out in the county somewhere. Right. Those things may or may not be enforced. I know that. To your point, Voss, if, if you don't have, if, if you're in an unincorporated county and you don't have adopted codes, mm -hmm. you're exempt. Because the trigger is adopting that's the code. Exactly right. That's, that's, right? That's the trigger is adopting the code. That's the way the that's the way the law is written. Yeah, but I believe that the energy code is across the board. In other words, you may not have a building code, but it's kind of like the electric code. Just because you're building a house in the middle of nowhere, you still gotta comply with the electric code. And as a matter of fact, the state has its own inspectors sure. to come out and look at sure. it. Now whether or not they're gonna come out and look at the energy code, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Actually, it's not, it's not really what we're here to discuss, but you know, one of the questions that we've looked at is, well, that, this, this new requirement adds uh, workload to our plan review process. Okay. We, so have, we have quite looking? a few items that we want to kind of go over. I don't know if we're going to spend too much time on any item. No. And the reason I brought this up is because the, 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 the fallback, and we'll close this out, I agree. The fallback is going to come back to the city, and they're, where the public is going to say, wait a minute, how unfair is this if we have to start complying with all these things? Unless we have real clear definitions as to where we're going to with this as a city. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. We, we have a real clear pathway for success for our builders, for our developers, that it's not so vague. Like right now, it's real vague to me. You know, and you know, if I was going to come in and do a development here in Longmont, I wouldn't know which way to go. I mean, because the pushback from the, the general public is that well, if it's going to impose in my little simple life I have here in Longmont, that's why I left Boulder. All of a sudden, we're becoming like bold. That's what the, the sentiment's going to be. Mm -hmm. That's a problem for floating sentiment, and the city council's going to be hearing about it over and over and over. And that, that's where it will be started. Yeah. It'll be at city council. I mean, yeah. It's their direction. I know we've made some of those adjustments. Like you talked about the three phases of, of that. What did you say? It's, it's EV ready. Uh, it's, it's electric ready. Electric ready, EV, and, and then solar panels. And solar panels, yeah. So there's, there's, and we're using in about every development we have, apartment complex, you're seeing that, right, in parking. Right. And if, I parking, can, if I can state, like, I do all the residential plan review in Longmont, 
And we have already adopted Appendix AT in the IRC, which is the solar ready provisions. And we have also adopted the entirety of E34 in the 2021 IRC, which does require the car chargers. And I don't really see much pushback unless a citizen is going to build another garage and then I ask them to put that in there because they're like, we just built this house a year ago. We want to have another garage, but the code isn't very descriptive whether, hey, you can have one EV charger and then you're not required to add another. So uh, where do you draw the power from? You know, because the, the, the power demands are excessive. And it's on always been, panels. LPC's always been considered reliable as far as, well, you're right, right, there's going to be a point. Well, most panels along are what, two and a half? Coming in. Uh, the my house is 100. Yeah, my house is 100. On yeah. single family, I think most of them are 200 amps. On yeah. the townhomes, a lot of them are 125. After 1970. Yeah, anything before 70, like my house is 100. Yeah, and well, so, we still see 60 amp ones on them. Yeah, Do you really? Yeah, 60 yeah. amp A frames. <coughs> yeah. And so, you know, to put another EV on, on a 100 amp circuit, it's not feasible. And and then you can then they they would come back to Blast and they'd cry and they'd say hey it's an array you know I've got to buy a new panel it's going to jack up the cost of the whole thing yeah. and then you can go no it's okay and it's just part of the it's part of the regs you know um, it doesn't apply yeah yeah so, okay. it is an administrative step unless 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 you anyway yeah but, is, but part of the I mean uh, our our makeup of new residential units has changed and we're not building as many single family homes so we're building a lot of apartment buildings. And townhouses. And townhouses. Yep. And so, uh, there again, the regulations that we're speaking of today, the building codes are not retroactive, okay? It's only for new construction. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I have not heard any one, one comment from anybody uh, regarding capacity from the power company to provide reliable service. I mean, I, I've just not heard anything. Have you heard anything, Mark? Well, we're fortunate because, you know, our, our power supply is very solid. Though, in, in the long mm -hmm. power. But you get down to the metro area in Denver, there's all kinds of challenges going on. Boulder, city of Boulder, right now there is a, a, a fraternity. Was, and again, I'm, I'm coming out of the world I'm in. They got rid of their boilers because they were leaking and went total electric. And it took them six months to get power to that building and, and up in the hill. They went total electric. Then you know, they had to go three phase. Right? They went three phase, and they had to bring new lines in. It was extremely expensive, um, and they wish now they would just double the whole new boiler. For us, it yeah. doesn't matter. Look at whatever. Um, Michelle, would you like to start and present your sure. coats? Fire could start. I suppose. And if you guys need to take off, you can. I mean, I don't want to hold you up. I'll say sorry real quick for being late. Had a car. Hit up Santiago's in Brighton, and I had to babysit until they gave us some dinner. They gave you dinner, dude. I know. I <laughs> wish. You about no. <laughs> <laughs> With this drill drive, you're here by Lowe's. Like, God, you're slow. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. We can share just point of order. I think we need to accept the June meeting yeah, for And noticed that it. Andy was here at a yeah. such and such a and time. He was late, so. and he did bring lunch. Yeah. It's like six forty-five. Oh, That's what I have. He didn't bring dinner. Yeah, okay. Uh, we recognize that Mr. Homer has arrived, and we've got Sam. And uh, uh, Mark, what do you suggest again? Oh, well, I just point of order to do the approval of this June 6th meeting. Then All right. Yeah, so, so June 6th yeah. meeting, are there any questions on the June 6th meeting? Move we approve the June 6th meeting. Now. Second. Second. Seconded. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Done. Move on. Thank you. Are you happy now, Mark? No. Okay. And Andy's here. We're all happy. Uh, did everybody get a chance to look at any of the the proposals there? I mean, you can see. I know Matt had a little sheet. This is just what I'm passing out. Is just a general summary. From ICC of the changes to the 24 IFC. It's not, I didn't put a lot in there. Because we could, we could spend a whole class on it, right? So this is just a, a general class. Did you get one on there? Okay. So, and they're kind of done by, it's kind of by section in here. And I don't know that we have strayed or 
you know, Tom mentioned that, you know, Boulder's got their own amendments. We have our own amendments. Commerce City, well, okay. But it, it's kind of what makes it work here, what locally makes it work, and what we can enforce, right? And you look at staffing levels, and you look at response capability when you're talking fire, and that's what drives a lot of our amendments. So the sheet you're looking at is from ICC, and that's generally what they've changed in the code. And then a couple of them, this is from a sprinkler, like, uh, group. That, and it just talks about a couple that are in the IBC and the IFC. So that's just, that's kind of just background for you. And if you have two of them playing next nice together, you have the IFC one, the nine, and the ten, and the IBC one's playing nice. Yep. So, because our friends are building and it's we like that. <laughs> we all talk the same language, right? So let me push it. And you know, you keep talking, but we're talking about electrification and stuff. So batteries are still not far from everybody's mind either. So that's also another energy source that's been a source of, I don't know, sometimes contention, but a lot of use, right, lately? Uh, so I don't know, Mark, is there anything you wanted to address at a high level before we look at the specific amendments or the summary? And I won't read all these to you, um, but you can see we have a fairly good mix of what remains, um, a few that we have modified. Um, this is the batteries in the IFC, it's about what, chapter 12? Yep. Um, did they do a lot different in the 24 than in the 21? Yes. Yes. That was a kind of that was kind of one of their emphasis points. So now we're looking at detection. Okay. Local detection is not a choice. Is it, does it specify the kind of detection? Is it is it specifically like a, a heat sensor, or smoke sensor, something? That else? is up to local jurisdiction in a lot in a lot of cases, right? So it depends on the quantity mm -hmm. and if they're storing them, if they're actually manufacturing them, or if they're some of them are below their thirty percent, right? When they're storing and working on them. Anything else you want to add from the code stuff? Well, chapter chapter twelve, Andy. Uh, they they do a lot of the. They clumped them all into just energy systems, and they're doing a lot of referencing back, eliminating a lot of the code language and referencing back to you know, PA eight fifty five standard for mm -hmm. for battery storage systems, which we adopt also. Which is one of those. Which is a new standard addressing the energy storage systems or energy systems. And you got different types of all kinds of different de definitions for it. Sound like you're fighting a cold, man. Mm -hmm. You're fighting a cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think you're, you're chewing. Okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what we've gone to in a lot of these, some of the rooms, is also visual when when they see text. And that is for people, a lot like we do with CO, right? And places, so we want it visual. That's for staff, too. Staff and responders, right? So it's a, a quick alert. Uh, the sprinkler systems, I think they also, Mark, you want to address that a little bit with what they require? Because so it's not a choice anymore. I think it's, you have to suppress and you have to detect. For? Energy storage systems. Energy storage systems? Yeah. The uh, the record keeping one one ten point three ITM sent to I roll as representative of AJ. Yeah, that's a third party <laughs> inspection testing maintenance company. So okay. contractors will go perform annual five year maintenance on fire alarm, fire sprinkler, kitchen hood systems, and they submit them right to I roll, and then we use that as our database. Okay. And then they do a review, Andy, uh, also, and then notify us if there's any critical deficiencies via email. Right away. Right away. That need to be fixed. Like, they've got a sprinkler system shut down or a large school out of ser service. Okay. So it's like a, another another inspector for us. Right. And it's database management. And it's really no cost helpful. to us either. So okay. contra contractors pay to submit. Nice. Nice. And I rolls does stand for inspection reports online. That's I roll. 
That's kind of interesting. So the code is requiring the payment of a third party service. Yes. I guess you could call it, yes. You could say that. But, but the code requires maintenance, right? Inspection, testing, and maintenance. Right. And, it re and it requires them to, to send that to the jurisdiction. That's what we're having to send it. But is this, is this, I mean, is this literally a company we're talking about? Correct. It is a company. It's a the, third code is, the code is specifying a company to which you shall sub submit your records. Yeah. No, no, I, that, I referenced what we were doing to address inspection, testing, oh, okay. maintenance, record. So Longmont is using IRO. Longmont is using okay. IRO. Okay, it's not like it's written to the code that thou shalt use this company. Okay. Correct. And that's why it's, it's a modification, right? It's, so it's not, it's not a, it's a new system that was approved or a new, new third party that was approved <coughs> by the city of Longmont. So third party is the best way to say it, right? So the code is not specifically, I, the fire code does not say use I roll. So it's similar to conveyance inspectors. Pardon me? L L L L L yeah, yeah. yeah. conveyance inspectors. You guys do not have a, a conveyance inspector on staff, right? You Correct. Third, you third party it out? Yes. Okay, same thing. Okay. And, and they, they report to jurisdiction, which is, is a state. Mm -hmm. And like Mark said, it's it's like another inspector for us, basically. Right. And then we're, we're, we're as all city short as administratively, so we have the best data management system on ITM that we've had, I think, since I've been here in this spot in 10 years. And so before we do any inspections, we can always reference iRoll so we know what we're looking at. We go to these places, and if they have identified decisions, we can make sure they're clear. So it's really been very helpful. Hey, Michelle, just for clarification, if, and if you said it, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Um, what does your color codes mean on this spreadsheet? Go right up at the top, Lost. Oh, yeah. Okay. And per what you were saying, that those third-party inspectors are specifically going to be for energy storage systems, fire protection? No. Inspection, no, 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 testing, no, no. maintenance for fire, 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 fire sprinkler, oh, okay. kitchen, kitchen hoods, hoods, alarm, sprinkler, fire pumps. Understood. All fire protection. Fire stuff. life safety systems. Okay. Not energy systems. Okay. Fire systems. I could talk about that. So, um, overdue. Michelle, since, since this isn't blue, what is the nature of the addition or amendment to that section? Just just to pick, just to keep picking on one section. <laughs> and the record keeping <laughs> one of all things. <laughs> like, really. Uh, so, it's blue because it's a modification, right? right. Because of the addition of I roll, the third party. I see. Was it different? Was it, a, I mean, so is, is Longmont responding to a new requirement in the code and then modifying the new requirement in the code? No, I could change the color if that makes it easy. If I left no, no. that in black, because it, it's a remaining um, requirement from the fire code, I could have just left it black and just made I roll blue because that's what we're using. So before, we had the contractor just emailing us, and it was not a very good system where we could reference mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. We couldn't identify deficiencies quickly. We weren't making sure we were you know, adequate and appropriate Understood. with with those ones. So so really it's it's the database piece mm -hmm. that really is helpful with IRO. It's the service. The code requirements are all the same. The service is a change. correct. Understood. Thank so you. I could make that all black except for the word I roll and that would be the only difference. I'm just thank you. No no I, I want it to be clear and if I if I coded that wrong it, it maybe should be No 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 it's great. I mean I think that makes it I mean it calls attention to it. And like the no cost to the city and no, really no cost of businesses, so the contractor picks that up now whether they pass, it on. pass some of that on. But it's really minimal. I think it's 10 to 15 bucks, and that depends on how many reports they have done by then. So it's relative, like they probably don't notice it a whole lot. So it's pretty minimal. So, yeah, so the reason that it's new is the numbers changed, number one. It went from 109 to 110, and then... We added that section that says inspection, testing, maintenance reports shall be submitted to the fire code official within seven days of completion of the report through inspection, testing, and online reports. Because we're just making the contractors have a deadline to submit those reports instead of setting on them for 30 days and we got a violation or a critical violation we don't know about it that we're not aware of. Yeah, yeah. so that's why we did that. And, and forgive the uh, building official asking silly questions about the fire code, but so all of these changes that are blue or red, oh, reds or deletes, 
Um, oh, the ones that are in blue. Because There's been the, some sort of modification. Why not just code section? Because of the nature of the fire code, all of these changes are in effect immediately. Right? As soon as the city approves the amendments, right? Aren't fire code um, changes retroactive? No, 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 no. no, no. They're not. They're not. No. In, they're not. They're not implementable at the next round of inspections for for a structure. So, for example, the one here about putting uh, addresses in the backs of strip malls. Yep. Right. Uh, five hundred five one one. Um, so how how does that when when does that become um, enforceable for this for the jurisdiction? With a full building permit. Okay, so that's pretty far down the road. Uh, in, in my view, I mean, this is not a this is not a criticism. In my view, you have the authority to do that already, as written. You can go ahead. That's and do what that I if understood. You have the want to. I mean, that's what I understood. But if you want, it, it makes sense. If you want to make it clear so that nobody can complain. That's fine. We didn't want to make it retroactive. I guess I mean maybe that's uh, maybe that's too too broad. Uh, anyway, I'm just trying to learn a little bit um, mm -hmm. as yeah. to how these things become incorporated. And a lot of that is response related, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have guys that are having a difficulty, like let's say at night, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a strip mall, and they can't identify, or an owner's kind of somebody's collapsed somewhere, and it's the middle of the night. So that's when, and that is one we're working with building on. So it's mm -hmm. going to be in both. Codes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, that makes sense. That's one of the reasons why. So that I actually, I actually enforced that today, by the way. It was a strip mall on 900 South Hoover. They put in a new restaurant and oh, yeah. they didn't have the right suite number. We should have been C. They used D. And I said, and by the way, please update your, your letters in the back doors, too. Yeah. So, and I can only think that would help with utilities, anybody that's yeah. got deliveries, right. etc. cetera. Get those yeah. Just help everybody. Yeah. Mm. But retroactive, we're not going to go around and, and, and notice everybody for not doing that. But if they pull the permit, they're <coughs> I'm going to make them do it. I mean, that just makes sense. And it's been on the address of the side forever, right? Contracting, so we can see it. I'm and you'd be surprised when people, we have to write that up. So, can we relate that to like a level one, two, or three alteration? Yeah, that'd make a lot of sense too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even at a level one, it's only going to help the owner and the occupants of the building. So and provide a great level of public safety efficiency. Yeah. That'll catch a lot more, like a lot more structures. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is, I mean, that the specific modification is a very low cost modification. And some stencils. You can color it yourself. Yeah, you really want to. You really want to. Right. What other questions might you guys have? The code has caught up a lot of places, so that's more of red. The pump room construction sizes, isn't that, wouldn't that, um, small. This is an interesting wrinkle. Uh, in the IMC, there's all kinds of requirements about accessibility and serviceability, um, and, you're, and it sounds like you're sort of repeating that, the 30, 30, 80. So Our good friends in building gave us those dimensions. Those are no good numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Hence. Okay. That's so we wanted to make that. It, so yeah. What we found is, and, and like Mark mentioned and Bloss mentioned, that what we're seeing a lot of construction of is apartment, multifamily, townhouses, multifamily, a lot. Some of we found some places where in, when they're requiring a pump, right? A lot of them do. They put one in wrong in one of them, and Public Works found it, and then there was no room to go in there and make the change. Like they put it in laterals. Oh, they had to change the backflow because the backflow wasn't listed for vertical and they installation. Installed it, and then they the couldn't change it because the size of the pump room was not sufficient to work in, right? So, so we thought we would just clear that up for people. So that it can't be just a small closet; it needs to be a pump room size mechanical closet that we can actually move around in and perform maintenance in it if necessary. Uh, 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 it's, I'm trying to think where, but I wonder if there wouldn't already be language more in the plumbing code that would talk about uh, the need to be able to remove and replace the fixture without having to remove permanent mm -hmm. parts of the construction. And it's I also... Think that's, I mean, I think, try to pull up, but I believe yeah. that's... Uh, for, for us, and for instance, in certain weather rooms, an example, at Northern Colorado Medical Center, they put a high-pressure steam boiler in the boiler house, but did not provide access to the end panel doors via double doors. And so we show up and say, hey, where's your access doors? Pull tubes. 
Well, the engineer didn't inspect it, and they had an electrical panel 30 inches away from the back of the boiler. Uh, this thing's going to fly, boys. So they had to go in and literally rebuild that boiler house and put garage doors up and down to be able to pull tubes out of that boiler. Mm -hmm. And so access is a very, very important part of what we're looking at mechanically. So we're clearing that up. I mean, so it, this, it this will clear up. If it's a where are we going to make? I think that's a good point. You yeah. know, I think the whole, I mean, this is a pretty sneaky way to do things, but the argument that I can hear in my mind is, oh, this is not a mechanical system. It's not a plumbing system. It, at the at the at the backflow, it's broken off from the domestic system, right? It's actually a fire suppression system, so it doesn't fall in the mechanical code. It doesn't fall in the IPC. It's something else. Uh, backflow is part of the IPC. IPC, yeah. right? But th that's where it stops. In, in my, yeah. you know, so well, I, could, I could, It goes out to the meter. I could so. I could see it. I could see it being argued that like, oh no, this is just a pump for the a different a different entirely yeah, different system. People argue stuff all the time, right. you know, and. Right. and uh, it's just you just say you know I appreciate what you're coming from, but I'm afraid. Yeah, we need to do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and putting it in, putting it in, um, putting it in into the language really helps. You have the department some enforceable teeth, right? And it also makes it feel to the public like, oh, it's not just your point against theirs. Right? It's it's something we all agree to. Yeah. I mean, uh, so this is a um, it, this is again. Uh, not a person to do it however you think it is best. Uh, oh, when I left here and then Erie, I was I was much more uh, amendment um, interested. Uh, these days, I try to write an interpretation, put it on city letterhead, save it in a file, be able to produce it, and say so that that's what stops it. So I can say, hey, look, I didn't just make it up yesterday. It's right there. It it, it allows more flexibility if I screw up. I can go ahead and ooh, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I've got a new interpretation because I botched that last one, um, which unfortunately has occurred. Um, so I'm just take that out. Yeah, I mean, just, just take that out. Our interpretation would be. Yeah, easy. I mean, so I, I, I basically, you know, you 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 can have an interpretation that code intends that uh, you have, let's say, a, a certain size this or whatever. It's code intends for you to be able to remove these parts, whatever it is. I, I'm not coming up with a great example at this hot second. And not make the amendment. Save it as an interpretation. Code already says you get to interpret it. Period. Dot. Um, so you're trying I, to say we don't need this? Is that I mean, there's a, I'm saying for for some of the things you for like the addresses. I, I don't believe you need them. You could you could write an interpretation that for your your folks this district how this um, section five hundred six whatever you know applies. Um, this we we mean for this to attend. However, so we do have some position statements which we use when it's a little bit more in that gray, like you're saying, right. the, intent, the intention of the code versus what does the code say. Right. And so we are taking that piece out. I, I don't want it to be interpreted. I don't want right. it to, to be a discussion. And and it's it's like I think Tom was mentioning, we have different things that goes to Boulder, goes to. So this is important to us because we've seen it enough. And it's it's problems it's, and it's money. But there's, and there's that's, the bottom line. If it works that, for you, do it. That developer a lot of money to fix that room. And that's all that's what we're seeing a lot. So Well and the key is, you know, get away from well instead of this, I think it should be this way. It should be you know, this is what the code says. That's why if you take the ambiguity away from from the discussion, you know, instead of a, an opinion, this is what the code says. Love you, but we're not going to change the code. It's a, it's a act of God and city council to change the code. So this is what it has going to be. Not my opinion. This is the way it has to be. And then you can enforce it. That's your teeth. If it's behind written by code, you can enforce it. If it's your opinion, it's just that. It's your opinion. So I think we need to be careful to get away from the opinions and stick to what the code says. Right. So, so I don't have to interpret. And like saying, again, right now this is an issue for us locally, and so we don't want it to be. We want to make sure that it's, it's clear. And if we, we stop seeing it, we get a train to build these right, we can delete it. Yeah. They, because then we can reference the other codes that are necessary. We can always delete that piece. There, 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 so there is cycle. interpretation. So, uh, yeah. I think one of the favorite examples is uh, uh, drywall underneath the staircase if it's enclosed. Well, when is it enclosed? When it's half the basement, when it's a closet, the door's right there. What about if the door's two feet out? I mean, I remember that one has always been. So at one point, made that an amendment. And then decided, no, you know, we can just, the code is written, and it's in the, you know, view uh, of the inspector that it represents something closed where it's going to be difficult to see and not catch the attention, then we're going to call it that you need it. 
and and then just we leave it. You know, sort of code is written, so it becomes an opinion. Yeah, but opinion by code, though. It's yeah. it's a, it's an opinion that the building official by code. The, exactly. You know, so that that opinion well, becomes code. And it'll make this plan reviewer's job so much easier if he says, "Okay, this is what the code says. You need to do this." That way, some developer can come back and say, "Hey, I didn't know about that. You never told me about that." Hey, it's on plan review notes. That, that's gospel. That's that's God's law. You gotta abide by it. And it's an opinion of somebody that looks at plans every day that are yeah. taking these circumstances right. into account, not just some Joe Schmo right. that doesn't think about what's going to be. And we see the other side of this, right? Yeah. Now, and so we that, see the applicable that's side. A, and that's yeah. a good question of that because I come across locations that an engineer has specified that has been completely, totally out in left field, completely. And we have to bring them back home to what does the state code say? And they argue. I show them the code. Oh yeah, you're right. Then they have to then they rewrite their 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 changes and their plan review for the next job. You know, and it's it's a kind of thing. And I was, you know, I mean, Noah and I dealt with a job at CU in Boulder uh, several years ago. You know, and we'll talk about that later. But you know, you stick to the code. Stick to the code. Absolutely. And in that, and our code does stick to response too. Yeah. So our guys respond to these places. So we, they need to check yeah, you guys status know. of the pump, the panel, yeah. the pump. They need to, to know where it is, and they need to work in there with bunker gear, and air pack, and yeah. helmet, and all that stuff on. So it's not just like us little people. We got lots of junk on. So yeah. they need a little more room just to maneuver in some of those rooms. Good. 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 And I just noticed a typo I had. So down there, chapter 49, which stays, that is a change from chapter 41. This is That is something that we added... I think, gosh, two cycles ago, mm -hmm. two cycles ago, it was a document that was produced by Denver, and it's about alcohol uh, production. Storage and production. Storage and production. Cool. And it's distilling and distilling and beer. But what it does a really good job of, that document, and we use it as a reference before we formally adopted it, but it does classify what becomes a hazard area, H3, and each area over some of the other code where you have to jump around too much. So we we kept adopting that. It, it, the chapter did change. I noticed I left out the one. It was 41. Our last code cycle now is 49. So we were keeping that. I noticed my typo. They uh, added a chapter 41 to the fire code. So we had to renumber. <laughs> we had to renumber and find a new open spot. But we did that so there's consistency up and down the front range. And we do see a lot of my <coughs> distilleries come and go. So it's it's a really nice tool for both those people developing and owning a business and then us being able to go in and enforce and tell them what they need. So consistent there. Um, Mark any other high points? We eliminated valet trash. Yes, that that was one of the Prohibit, on the sheet valet, I I sent you. prohibit valet trash. I guess you got me. What is that? Yeah. Oh, you don't know what that is? No. Oh, you oh. Guys, do, you know, oh. do you guys know what that is? Yes. So it's on the sheet I gave you, the uh, that sheet, yeah. So the, these apartment that, owner, the, the that apartment little, management little, people, little items on it. that one, yep. The apartment management people hire these companies and they put all their trash cans out in the corridor oh, on, a, cer bag, on a certain day and then people come around and pick it all up. Well, what we're finding out is they're blocking the corridor. They get a they get a snow they get a snow event or weather event. They don't come and pick it up. They can't get there. So now we got trash. So now we got a corridor loaded full of combustibles. It has been at the code hearings for the last three cycles. That's called valley trash. It's called valley. Now will that be retro or is that only on you? Because that's. That's not really a built thing, right? That's more of like a practice. Service. Yeah, that once it's adopted, then it'd it be prohibited. Because okay. so my dad lives in an morning. apartment that does that, and so I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. And Boulder, I think, is going to eliminating it as well. All right, yeah. I see a lot of Boulder. So mm -hmm. who and they're who, looking at that too? Who is the enforcement unit behind it? Code enforcement or fire? Fire. Fire is interesting. Okay. Go ahead, what's call? Hmm. Once we discover them, once we know about them, <laughs> and then they call us about them, and we yeah, say no. So that's a really great point, though. Um, so that's that is immediately active. It's not triggered by any new construction. Where does as a as a resident somewhere? How do I know, 
or as an operator. It is triggered by new construction because each new home that gets built in Longmont gets charged $119 per unit for a poly escort, par, poly And this is not escrow fee. Oh, no, it's only yeah. right. Poly right. escrow fee, what Correct. is this for? That is for every single new dwelling that comes in because they get charged for the trash service that is provided by us to come to their residence. But if they were to do a third party, such as this new... Um, Valley service. Correct. Is implemented. They have to let us know that or else we charge them. And we don't really have anything on our application that... It's the trash can. It's a $119 trash can. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Polycart. Gotcha. Polycart. Right. Well, that and I think since to more next question, I think because it's a service and not necessarily a construction piece, which is why it would, would be more retroactive than more of the code. I mean, we got chapters in the we got chapter three that's automatically retroactive for general storage, general fire protection requirements. That, I mean, chapter eleven. I mean, blocking I chapter blocking an alleyway, yeah. block, blocking the corridor. It's just is, is all over the you know it yep. doesn't serve anybody right yeah. and it's a it's a hazard for all for all kinds of stuff yep um, I'm just I'm just trying to pull on the thread of sort of how is the what is the mechanism for enforcement it triggers it and right are you going to notify every every that section I also believe says it has to be approved by the fire code official anyway existing services so you would notify so we just denied it <laughs> okay I just so, and I'm just curious like I don't think it's actually you know, our purview to like get in the weeds on that thing. Yeah. The people that really find it appealing would be who? The seniors, right? Yeah. Because they don't want to walk their trash somewhere. Well, the, the complexes maybe don't design it to be very user friendly to Correct. get to the trash or to Is, the uh, mm. Is that essentially because mm. they offered that? Right. You have to carry out your own garbage. We're prohibiting. Uh, I, 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 I have a location in Denver that they're remodeling the entire first floor because UPS and Amazon leave packages in the common corridor, and they're having to take a two rooms out in the wing for deliveries and the mailboxes. Because there's so much stuff gathered in the ex that exit corridor of that building, and then we're fired and make a change. More than <laughs> <more, more laughs> Yeah, and then, well, it's access. Yeah, a ton of it. Yeah, a fireman could not pull through with a hose because that narrowing, I mean, I, it was like this, it was two foot because all boxes stacked up in that corridor. So Denver Fire is, is pushed on the building department, they're making them modify that corridor to allow access, similar to what they're talking about here, these, these, these transfers. Crazy. Well, it's a lot safer. I think then it then they then it's holidays and they want to put decorations. Oh, yeah. And then they want to put their little trees. Yeah, I think it's good. Their little pumpkins out there. They want, and they're cute and stuff. But then it just yeah. no, no, we yeah. still have to get through that. Going but back to the public sentiment, are we going to be trash cash trash can cops going around? You know? so. and that could be stinky. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would move that we just basically go ahead and accept this. At the end of the day, this has been working. If you look at the modifications that are new, they're relatively minimal. That's a small deletion. It's going to be self-evident. Um, yeah, there's nothing. Nothing. Uh, so I'm five. Okay. Second. I got these votes on the floor. Mm -hmm. Second. 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 Uh, yeah, yeah. All opposed. All in favor. Aye. 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 Done. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good question. Good question. Record keeping. I like that. Okay, Rob. Record keeping. What did you just do? Yeah. You just passed our amendments. Oh. Well, what are your highlights? Give me your next one. Want to go to your section? Yeah. Ours is. Are we done with fire? Yep. Ours is. You guys are free to do more if you want to. Hang yeah, there's a Baco game on. <laughs> no, I know. Well, what do you have it on? You could put it off there and just put it on. Sorry. Sorry. Mute. Six, oh, did <clears throat> Is so there any question that you might have Terran lost? Terran, 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 Yes, I think I've oh, met I think him. I'm more positive. She uh, departed and went to Safeville. 
Okay. Well, you won't look at this one. It's 13 nothing, bro. Okay. Is it 13 nothing? Almost half time. Yeah. He kind of choked the first round. We got to hear the first drive. And, and it sounds like small. he was uh, big 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 big. jitters. You know, the first part of the game. Bo Nix is a FEMA. FEMA. Right. Yeah, we'll see how it shakes out. I believe. See this I believe. <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, what are you doing next? What's actually doing next? So all of the <laughs> All of them. All of them. I mean, are you okay. starting the building code or residential code? I, IBC. IBC? Well, maybe mm -hmm. you want to hear that? One or a few minutes for the IBC. So basically, one, one of my goals is, as, as you know, the building code and the fire code are sister codes, brother codes, whatever you want to call them. Um, so when, when fire does a change, there's a high possibility that that code also exists in the building code. So we follow suit by making an amendment because if we don't, somebody could be reading the building code and not catch that amendment because they failed to look at the fire code. So when, when I'm done, all of my codes that have something in common with fire will have a similar amendment. So... That's, that's typically what we We do. talk about the addressing is one commonality yeah. there. If you look at the stairs in apartment buildings under construction that was on my list, okay. you'll see that replicated probably on the building. Sure. Definitely. And so if you, if you right. turn the page, uh, you will come up on a section that basically talks about the significant changes. Significant changes are basically changes, as you know, that are highlighted by this document. Uh, and we plan, and it's going to become part of the code. We don't plan to change it, but we don't, we don't really see anything that needs to be changed. I mean, it's just going to be part of the code. And, uh, you know, we have different sections in here. Um, so you, you don't have city proposed amendments necessarily. This not, not for these. Okay. These are just significant changes. If you want us to learn more about these changes, there is a significant code change document that you can get from IBC that explains these in more, in more, okay. more depth. Because I remember in the last cycle you had some specific... Yes, we had amendments. Local ones. Yeah. Uh, we can Perfect. talk about those later. Okay. But right well, now, I, I, I just wanted to draw your attention to these documents, IMC. Um, I, I do have one question regarding the mechanical code. Um, we, the, the materials list for vent pipes includes a foam, a foam core cellular pipe. Cellular, is that called cellular? Cellular core. Cellular core. Um, if you guys recall, Way back when they had an incident in Vail where some people died of carbon monoxide. Aspen. They blamed Aspen. it on the oh, Aspen. Aspen. They blamed it on the foam core. I don't think that was the real cause. If you dig deeper, it's because it was installed incorrectly. Correct. Uh, however, a lot of people got the misconception and decided to just take it out of the code. Well, after we thought about it for a while, we were thinking about doing the same. Do you guys allow that in your town? Manufacturer, whatever the manufacturer and says. That's, and that's what we decided to do. Do you guys want to change that or just let it run? I think it's in our fuel gas code right now. Oh, no, we, we got rid of that in the 18. Yeah. We put it in in 15. Well, if you look at the definition of Category 4, Category 5 venting, mm -hmm. okay, and more, every manufacturer, to Andy's point, specifies it has to be solid core pipe. You know, and, and what I'll do in inspection, I'll tap that pipe, I can tell the solid core or not. The state will approve the use of a foam filled cellular pipe for a, an exhaust. For the intake, air supply, yes. Mm -hmm. And for the exhaust, because it's not temperature rated for the fluid. So it has to be solid core. Yeah, the problem we're having is that a lot of the forced air furnaces, mm -hmm. even that, you know, the um, high energy ones, in their instruction manuals, allow cellular core. Yeah. Now, the, the problem with that is there's certain Pipe manufacturers, Charlotte Piping being one of them, in their specs specifically say do not use their cellular core on exhaust. And, and most times they'll specify an ASTM number on there. It's got to mm -hmm. be that ASTM number. Of course. It's D1785. If it does not, then you have the teeth to say you can't use this. It's really, so it's really a, you know, how, how fine-tuned... 
So I guess it's, in my mind, it's, it's like how big is the problem? How, how much risk is there? And then how extremely how, minimal. How we much carbon monoxide detected everywhere? I've never, I've never everywhere. seen it used. I, I don't. I mean, I'm, we don't have any. Well, Matt, you're an inspector, but I've not seen it. Yeah, so, it's everywhere. So yeah, how, how much plumbers use? You know, it's like how much plumbers are using it? Most plumbers use it. Of course, it's cheap. How much? How like how? How much clarity do you have in the field about the material application and the suitability of the material application? It's already not code legal to install the wrong material in a condition, right? The question really is, is it self-evident for during enforcement? And if it's not, then becomes this, this question of, is there a risk that we're taking? Or essentially, is it still the builder's risk, right? It is, in a sense. By eliminating the material option or adding an amendment, are you are you moving the needle from somewhere? I mean, I'm, I'm channeling Andy a little bit here. here. Here's the thing. <laughs> if uh, you, you, you think uh, uh, old buildings or something, you, you look at the structure, just by analogy here, um, the structure in no way would be up to current code, but it's been standing there since 1875, something like that. This is similar where it can be debated, and it's a great point, Matt. I've, I've heard that before where, like, the Charlotte says, hey, don't use this for that. Um, but, but then the, the furnace installation instruction said, sure, go right ahead. So it was a list of like several things around it. Go, go for it. And the reason that they're fine with it is, I mean, think about how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of those gone in. No problems. I would say millions probably. Yeah, so, so literally no problems. It, it does make the news when these things go south. So, and then on top of that, you're talking about something, we have the carbon monoxide detectors everywhere. I mean, uh, upstairs, I mean, sometimes there's like five of those ding-dong things in these big houses. So, at the end of the day, I'm not terribly scared about it. So, just going with the manufacturer is fine with me. You're still pointing to something that says, you know, so. Well, it's a nose point that puts it back on the builder. Yeah. I, I mean, I... Because uh, if they put in Charlotte piping and it fails, then Charlotte piping is like, we're not covering that. Our for, 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 for how many times this gets discussed versus versus the actual problems associated with it. If we had so much as one person get sick that we heard of because of, um, it cracked on its own without a soccer ball hitting it, I mean, what, whatever, you know, then maybe you, you've discussed it because it just, it's almost a, um urban legend more than, more than a thing, so... Yeah, there's actually there's also another side to the whole thing. As as you're speaking, Andy, it occurred to me that if you do make a modification, right, and you intentionally go in there and meddle with the language, right, and then somehow it gets missed, and there's an incident, so there's a lot of like ifs in a row. Mm -hmm. Now you, as a jurisdiction, look uh, more precarious because you took the time to make a modification that then was not followed through, right. So now you've I mean, it's not, it's not like the builder's off the hook, but you've gotten in closer to that business, right? So I, I feel like, um, to answer your original question, this is a, it's already in the code. Mm -hmm. Material suitability, right? I would, not, I would not say that there's a great utility in you changing it or the city changing it, right? Okay, with that in mind... Um, there's really not a whole lot in the IDC that we plan to amend other than housekeeping. What I mean by housekeeping is changing the code sections because the new code just happened to change the code section. So now we've got to go in there and change the code section. Just see a couple sure. of those. Sure. Sure. Can, can you speak about 110.5? Is that, is that not um, alternate means and methods? I think I thought one ten four was alternating his methods or or um, He's looking on the big spreadsheet. Yeah. Sorry, the last. I, I don't mean to like ambush you with some random question, but I just I know that this is a part of the code that I often sort of circle around this drain. It's looking at. Um, I want to say it's alternate means and methods. What page are you on? I'm on the back of this. I'm on the top of your spreadsheet. And the, the section is what? Uh, 110.5. Oh. And it says here, items deleted? No. Um, partial completion. And maybe I'm in the wrong, maybe I'm in the wrong section. I'm about to open it up. Uh, yeah, but it takes forever. I mean, this is okay. a little, 
Or about the time we jet, this thing will be ready to go. So okay. <laughs> I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, I was going to pull up the actual huh? IPC. I don't know. From Boston. Y'all seen this? 24? Super Hydro. Uh, Super Hydro. Yeah, I just got QR codes and all that. Yeah, I got it. I just yeah. got it. I guess I can go grab the book. I haven't opened it, but I got a copy. I apologize. Maybe just paying with the guys bracing up this building there to hit. Hello, um, this is Andy. I'm just curious, boss. If that's if that hey, if you're, sir, you're, that's it, 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 uh, you're changing it, that one section, that administrative section of the code. Um. Yeah, two seconds. One one ten point five, right? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, in the fire code, it changed from one eleven to one twelve. Okay. So it may be similar in the building, but I think that's going to get it. And maybe that's maybe that's all it is, but it says partial completion. I'm just wondering what that's about. Um, and again, I'm, I'm only I'm only picking my, <clears throat> sticking my nose in that because that's this is this one section of the code that talks about sort of your authority as the building official to make determination as to how to you know when when's a variance okay, when's a new system okay. Um, Creates the master book. <laughs> in there too. It does. Every night. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, 110.5. Yeah, that's inspection request. Oh, okay, then forget it. Uh, that's, I'm sure we're not going to, I'm sure we're not going to get, that's not what we're looking for. So, my apologies for it. One is time to that no. Maybe it's 104 time. I think one, yeah, it might be 104 time. Yeah. So, pretty much. So it's 104 something. Get a drive in that city. Thanks, folks. Okay. Right. Thank oh, yeah, Thank 104 two. Oh, they're, they're magnetic or something. Yeah. So. Hey, Michelle, did you did you uh, put this together with yours? I did not. I did not. Because these look old to me. These these look like. I, that's, I, that is not my stuff. Yeah, this looks like an old copy somewhere. Right? Those were the tabs that were in the spreadsheet that you sent us. Oh, they were? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this looks like it's from 2006. That must have been somebody else out there. Just disregard that backside then. Because if you look at some of these... Just disregard that. If you look at some of these sections, it's referring to the 2006. Yeah, right. does. That's what Matt was asking me over here. Yeah, yeah. so this, this, this is very old. I would never say anything with the building code, just so you know. That must have been... Uh, Sorry, I didn't, know, I didn't know enough to know oh, whether no, it was no, going yeah. to be <laughs> um, Because of the delay in what's the energy and the residential code, we had trouble coming up with our version of this this, this cycle. Uh, and that's another reason why we don't have... Hold on, amendments because of that and we're waiting on direction from council to which way, which direction we want to go for our amendments, for especially the energy code. Um, you, you do it sprinklers in the single family unit or not? No, no. I looked at these two to tell me that. Townhouse? Yes. Townhouse is Mark, thing, yeah. Mark doesn't want those. <laughs> um, <laughs> and from what I've seen, there there isn't enough new stuff in the code that we want to amend out. I don't think we're going to have, other than energy, I don't think we're going to have too many new amendments. So we can expect a uh, healthier discussion next summer. Yeah. Yes. Next winter. No. <laughs> or fall. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping City Council gives us guidance to pursue the complete energy code that the state is working on. Because once we have that, it will be a whole lot easier to put our amendments together and be done with it. Because if they make us do it, as soon as possible, but we're going to have to do this all over again. And the reason I had this meeting is for that possibility that they said, don't worry about that, just adopt the codes and, and go with it. But if, it, but if in the case they say, oh, boss, take your time, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fantasizing here, <laughs> uh, go ahead and wait till the energy code is done and then adopt them next year. Well, then uh, you will definitely be reinventing. Yeah. Can, can you adopt what you have? Or can you all of them as what? Can we what? Can you adopt just the codes the that are ready? Now? Or I could. And, and that's what we're going to ask council. 
Oh, yeah. Gotcha. I mean, there's a lot of options that we could go. I'd rather wait and, and adopt everything together because... Because then it's piecemeal, right? Which because I, it's just a lot of work. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't... This was unexpected. We didn't know that the, the energy code was going to be such a controversial topic. ICC beat that to death, and they finally finally came out with a uh, solution. So in Boulder, they didn't wait. They wrote their own energy code. And never to effect a few yeah, months ago. but the energy really? code that they are uh, they are working on is going to adopt the energy code, the ICC. They energy just didn't code. want to wait for this. They're making their own amendments. Right to the code. So it is going to be in the code. So we we don't have any choice. We have to wait for those amendments to come through. Uh, I do have a question though, uh, since you're here. Um, ADUs, accessory dwelling units. Um, we have code language now available in the appendices of the IRC. We, we're thinking about adopting that. It's really not a big deal. It basically allows us to address the ADUs in a more efficient manner because right now the code language that we use, that Taryn uses, is basically code language that the planners made. Okay? So if you know how planners think, they don't think like us. And so I'm thinking, <laughs> it's not a criticism. They're no, just no, different. no, it's They're different. Just right? different. And uh, we, we would rather own that since we enforce it. And so we're we're thinking about adopting the appendice. Um, there, there's stuff. I, this is difficult off the top of my head because I have no idea how long it's been since I read that. But a lot of it sticks to that same sort of um, can't be greater than fifty percent. When it, there's essentially three types of ADUs throughout the attics that almost never happens. Maybe it could happen in Longmont, but in most jurisdictions they just do not the attic space. So you have. A, a basement, you have an addition, we have a detached structure. And the when, when they write this stuff, they're, they're really thinking about the detached structure, and hence the whole 50% the size of the primary structure. And in a day and age of where affordable housing is such a big deal, I wish they would just move past that um, and just get out of that. It, it really, you know, uh, I know the state is trying to do affordable housing things and ADUs and, and saying, hey, you can't prohibit this, that, and the other. Um, and they should. It should. It should be a lot more, in my view, for whatever that's worth. Um, your private property, as long as you build it to the, to the building codes, that's safe. Knock your socks off. But there's no reason to limit, if you have a, a 1,600 square foot ranch, to limit the basement to 800 square foot, because it's 50% the upstairs, is stupid. Pure and simple. That's just as dumb as it gets. And so I hope that this can be better than that. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's I, 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 don't, point under, I, mean, yeah, that's I just, don't understand why you that he's up in arms. Planning like codes would not allow a basement to be... Planning codes do allow a basement to be an ADU. It's just, yeah, but uh, a full basement more than 50%. The only time a square footage limitation comes um, that restricts an ADU size is when it becomes a detached structure, which is that 50%. That's right? great. But I cannot recollect that appendix off the top of my head that you're talking about. It just came out. I think that it brings up... Um, it does. The appendix for yeah. the 2024... So I would amend that square footage. So I mean, if you want to have it, you're right it there. there. And your character of the neighborhood for the detached... Okay. Fine, whatever. But but to do it in the basement is just a lack of understanding of why they wrote it in the first place. So, I mean, there's you can have a, a fine argument over, you know, should something be half the size and character of the neighborhood, all, whatever. You can talk about that. But to misapply that down to the basement is just dumb. So I hope that that gets corrected. I wonder in what situation, though, you would have an ADU that was over 50% of the above ground finished uh, square footage. Give it a range. That would so be if you have, pretty if you atypical. Have a, if you have a ranch um, home mm -hmm. and it's 2,000 some square feet, why restrict that basement to just 1,000 square feet? I don't believe that that is the case for an attached ADU. That uh, percentage of the square footage is only applied to detached That's cool. ADUs. That's great. Long That's long. great. That's awesome. That's cool. Good, good, good. So, so I can pull it up. 
would, would fit the no board. Still then uh, be responsible for like steps and <laughs> setbacks and distances, or would that all shift to yeah. didn't pull back that? Yeah, the setbacks just fall back to typical building code. Just on the lot. On the whatever zoning district you're yeah. in. Okay. So that's not really changing. That's right. okay. Yeah. So, uh, is there any other issue on the um, IRC side that <laughs> is a uh, big deal for you, Taryn? I'll be honest with everybody here. This is my first code meeting, so I absolutely went bananas with everything that I saw was different. But um, just a couple things. 309.7 is regarding the single and two-family dwelling sprinkler systems, which we have previously amended of the 2021 IRC, which I imagine we're going to do the same. R315 is a new section regarding sleeping lofts and the dimensions and the parameters that consider them to be a sleeping loft. Otherwise, dead space. Um, is it signed with a non, non R311 staircase? Is, is, is it's using uh, one of the other alternate stairs to that loft and it's still okay as a sleeping area? Um, I haven't really looked into the egress aspect of the steering loft areas, yeah. but I imagine a ship ladder would even be would suffice 315, R315. And there, there might be, a, a, in that appendix Q, that tiny home, there might be something that kind of I don't know, appeals to that as well. Yeah, the tiny homes, we did adopt the tiny you, home you section. That? Okay. And that has pretty steep stairs. I've seen that. Um, there's another new section, R909, regarding roof coatings, and that pretty much just relates it to the ASTM standards. There isn't any, you know, application table that really covers it. Um, rather than the total performance building or total building performance, they've added the, comp the component performance, and that's pretty much once the thermal conductive rating is less than or equal to the total building performance, it shall be in compliance for an addition. So, I apologize. I must have missed something. That you're out of the 909 now, or you're still? Uh, sorry about that. This would be N1102.1.5. Okay, so you got any energy. And then instead of like a performance, they're calling it something different than total building performance? So there is the total building performance, but then there is also a new added performance level called a component performance check. It's an alternate path. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's good because it wasn't too complicated already. <laughs> good to see there's another path. Yeah, you could be fun. Like half my list is Chapter 11. Yeah. Okay. Um, and is that the one that has the point system for... That is going to replace the current code section regarding additional efficiency packages. Now that is additional energy efficiency credits. And so you are allocated a certain amount of credits based off if you have an ERV, an HRV, um, a high performance equipment appliance, uh, over 80% of your ductwork in condition spaces. And those will all add up to two to three to four to five points of credits for this additional efficiency credits program. Um, within a 5B climate, I believe we have to have 10 total credits, so during my plan reviews I'll have to verify that. I don't know if they're going to implement that into some sort of energy software that they use, such as a HERS rating, but it would make my job a lot easier if they did. You Tell know, architects put it on the plan. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's yeah. what the jurisdiction can say, is yeah. you give me a page that sums this up, right? Yeah. Sums this, gives me a, a table, sums it up for us. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the credit system is also in the commercial energy code as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> I'm not a fan of that section. <laughs> well, and, uh, and so yeah, the, the point system might end up becoming more prevalent here mm -hmm. as an incentive for electrification. Because mm -hmm. that's another thing that council did ask for was options of incentivization. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just, a, it's just a much more malleable approach. It's a way more sort of, you know, it's like, well, I have an existing structure that might have a, whatever, two walls and some junky windows, but I can I can offset with this other stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's just, yeah, more options. Put it in a PV system and you're done. Complicated. It makes it complicated. Okay. Um, there's another one for gas fireplaces, on-demand pilot 
pilot lights, the appliance has to be rated for uh, over 50% efficiency rating. So that's one. Um, intermittent exhaust control for bathrooms. They can either have it be uh, ran continuously through a whole ventilation mechanical system, or they can have an occupancy sensor, a humidity sensor. Um, so there, there's like two other options with that. Um, this is multifamily, right? This is all IRC. Yeah, this is all IRC. Yeah, so so one or two family loans. Yeah. The big one, one that I put down was that efficiency credits uh, section because it completely overtook the previous additional efficiency package options. And so I'm going to have to just really familiarize myself with all of the credits and whatnot. For you, Tom, um, M2002.4.1 requirements for discharge pipe for the boiler pressure relief valve. There's 13 new requirements that they have to comply with for the discharge. New requirements? Yes, sir. Good say that. M2002.4.1. Very simple. Well, they can term the type of pipe, probably. And I, I would suspect, I mean, if, if the ICC is doing its, its job properly, I would suspect that they're bringing the residential requirements in line with other general industry practices. Like, you can't discharge that pipe somewhere near a walkway. Right. You know, it's like, it's, yeah. it's probably yeah. just tightening that up more than the well, ASM states has got to discharge to a point of safe discharge. Mm -hmm. So whatever that means. Now, there is a requirement in a boiler room to be a floor drain. Run to the floor drain, however, we see guys run piping along the floor right it's sitting on Uniscrub. That's a fall hazard, it's a trip hazard. You know, can we prevent that? No, because they're meeting the intent of the code, which is to a safe point of discharge. ASM also states that that discharge pipe must meet or exceed the code of construction of the manufacturer of the boiler. Okay, so at minimally 210 degrees. PVC does not meet that requirement. So we're going to kick that out every time. I've seen every city jurisdiction in this state allow guys to use PVC for a discharge pipe from their house. Is CPVC rated? CPVC is not rated. It has a 180 degree temperature rating. Okay. So it's not rated. That's the problem. Copper or metal or metal, some kind of, yeah. And then, and then when you bring it to the floor drain, you have to change the piping in the floor drain because you can't dump Basically boiling. You can't yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. And that's not going to happen. Yeah, so. exactly. So, yeah, there's, there's, there's a, kind of weird, a lot of weirdness to it. But, you know, our, our, this is why for us, at, at, at our department, we're boiler proper. At that first valve, beyond that, I don't care what you use. You know, and uh, it's, um, we're going to stick to what the code says for the boiler itself. Okay, now you said 13 changes or 13 modifications to the GC. Correct. What, what do you see in there? All right, well, let's read all 13. Huh? Let's read all 13. Go ahead. Um, one, not directly connected to the drainage system. Two, discharge through an air brake located in the same room as the boiler. Three, not be smaller than the diameter of the outlet of the valve served Perfect. and shall discharge full size to the air brake. Serve a single release device and shall not connect to piping serving any other relief device or equipment. Correct. Discharge to the floor, to the pan serving the boiler or storage tank, to a waste receptor, or to the outdoors. Discharge in a manner that does not cause personal injury or structural damage. Discharge to a termination point that is readily observable by the building occupants. Not be trapped, be installed to flow by gravity. Terminate not more than six inches above the floor or waste receptor flood level rim. Not have a threaded connection at the end of the piping. Perfect. Not have valves or T fittings. And be constructed with materials indicated in the section P90605 or materials tested, rated, and approved for such use in accordance with ASME A112.4.1. Perfect. Okay. Now, look at this picture. That's this pipes. Uh, this is at, at school. New boys at school. Okay. <laughs> That's a discharge yeah, pipe from the reef valve. Mm -hmm. oh. You think that meets the code? I can't really see it from here. It mm -hmm. comes out the reef valve, goes up over the boiler <laughs> to a receiving top of the black hole. hole. Yeah, nope. Okay. Over the boiler to the black hole. Uh, it goes the black hole? To the black hole. Yeah, uh, which is okay because you know, they, they, it's okay to use 50% black hole in the system. However, off the reef valve, you cannot discharge it vertically. And the local building inspector signed this off. 
it wasn't within the building, it's with the state. So me and John McGee had a conversation. We had a school. This is inviting Oh, really? Well, we would have been there too. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that's why I asked my John and I had a conversation about that. And the contractor said, well, what do we do? Not my problem. I want to figure it out. Fix <laughs> it. Yeah, you can't run down the floor drain because this, the school wants to retain and save the light bulb. Well, you know what? It's going to cost them more to make the modifications, to put a pump in, et cetera, to pump back to the glycol tank and just let it run in the floor drain and be done. Not my problem. I'm not going to sign off until <laughs> it's done, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so cute. they get that point. You, you, you can't put school. glycol in the storm drain anyway. Yeah. No, it's a this sanitary sewer. Sanitary. Yeah, even that. You know, it's, it's, there's some jurisdictions that do not allow discharge of the kind of material. And it's corrosive to certain metals, like glycol, glycol is. So, you know, it's just that fun. <laughs> you know, you're exactly right. And that's, that, that's a good. Good thing to understand what the code says, because it applies across the board, even to the AMS, the you know, AS, ASME border code. And just to feed off that as well, one of our main mechanical inspectors brought up today with higher efficiency appliances, they're going to have more acidic condensate. Mm -hmm. And with the acidic point. neutralizers, I looked in our land development code today, and we only have a code about the condensate going to, you know, the sanitary sewer, but as we know, that's going to be running. There is, to your point, that there is no language in any local jurisdiction that addresses condensate neutralization. So that's probably going to, we're probably going to be on the that first thing. That's going to change. Like I said, our, our HVAC um, inspector was pushing for that pretty hard. You, this you, can, you can have standards from, so when you, you know, chapter one, the way, the way things read, uh, Building divisions, often especially in smaller districts, um, have to enforce other ordinances besides just the building code. Right. And so, if there is a an adopted standard that the council has voted on that utilities wants, where the neutralizer is in position so that you're not killing all the bugs in your water treatment plant, um, then as an inspector, you can call that. Um, and we haven't received any pushback from doing that. Yeah. We, we do at the university. Every yeah. single one of our high efficiency boilers goes through uh, a neutralizer. Yeah, and you guys do a good job. I'll look Every one of your high, high what? Our, our high efficiency yeah. boilers. Category 4 okay. and 5, yeah. Uh, they, they just condense back. They rain back down. Oh, so they, they rain back down. Yeah. So yeah. Back down. down, down the the is, if the temperature it's, outside is 40 degrees, it's a, a boiler of the 200,000 degrees will generate a gallon of compensated in the hour. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be at IBG next week. And, and to Andy's point, it's just a campus standard. Yeah. You know, it's just a campus standard. I think it's smart. But and, and where the problem lies, and this is why I think this needs to be something that every, and, and, and safe built's not on board of this yet. I, I've, I've had discussions with those guys. I mean, you know, uh, but the fact is, in the mountains, where you have septic systems, okay, and you have a condensing boiler not neutralized, you will nullify the bacteria in that septic system. And you're digging up septic tanks all the time because you kill the bacteria in the tank because mm -hmm. that condensate is that acidic. If, if, it's, if it hit the, the bottom of the floor sink or the floor drain, the cast iron, it's going to kill the bacteria in the septic tank. And I've seen campgrounds at Vanessa's Park tear out entire septic systems because they didn't neutralize their boilers. It's crazy. So yeah, that that should be something that you know to use it as as a jurisdictional chief. Does that live in the state code somewhere? It's not. Uh, I I talked to Guy McMahon at the Jeffco about it. I've talked to all the ICC. But I talked to uh, uh, what's his name? He's, he's, he's right here. Um, Wheeler. What's his name? Uh, Greg Wheeler. Greg Wheeler. I talked to Greg about this. My my. Niece is married to his son, so we, we're a family. <laughs> all the time. Okay, I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she was like, he's retired, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah I mean, my niece is married to his son, so I see Greg all the time, you know. But the fact is, there's nothing in, in this, even in Dora. You know, there, I talked to John McGee about this and to his people. There's nothing yet that has the teeth to enforce the application of neutralizers. You know, even, even the manufacturers, they might suggest it, but they leave it to the local jurisdiction. The jurisdiction who, who runs the utility here? Who runs water and sewer? Who's the director for that? Uh, Bob, Bob Allen. Bob, well, Bob Allen's in charge of the most. Is that that his part? I check with him because it's his bugs. It's an interesting point out because in, in Boulder, they have to adjust their modification at, at the sewer plant 
during the winter months because the pH levels change because of the condensate drop in the soils. It's, I, I, I did inspections there and they had, we had a discussion about that. Wow. They said, yeah, about November we have to modify our treatments because the pH levels go up considerably because of this. And we have to lower the temperature too. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it's a crazy deal. What was that about the temperature? We have to lower the temperature of the discharge from the plants. Yeah, into the watershed. Yeah. yeah. Because it's raising the temp of the rivers. Yeah, it, it's a crazy deal. I mean, especially now as we get more and more efficiencies going on. Yeah, we're looking at them all the time, and we're writing violations all the time. But yeah, you know, if somebody really wanted to push back, there's nothing in the state voter code that says you have to do it. The chief and I have talked about perhaps maybe adding as a regulation change. We're, we're we're in regulation change next year. We're going to consider it, but you got to back it up with, like we said, code, and what the manufacturer specify. Yeah, our road mechanical guy was pushing for that. I mean, not just for the bugs, yeah, but for many reasons. Yeah. So they, he he was already pushing the that we had the requirement for neutralizers for high efficiency. Yeah. Yeah, we see it all that. that. So and also, that? Yeah. something else you're you're catching catching you guys can catch on and, and the changes come in. Where are you seeing it, Terry? That in CSD1 oh. does specify that a category four or five water heater, five water heater, has to be protected by an EPO at the door. Well, I'm not exactly it catching has it. has to be protected by an EPO, a kill switch. Well, 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 yeah. well, 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 yeah. Right. Um, basically, what I would like to for you to propose is that the the mundane changes that we're making that I consider housekeeping, and then uh, we'll probably I'm guessing here, but I'm thinking we are going to adopt the ADU appendices, and then make a motion to revisit any further amendments if we have to wait later on to create those. Amendments. The motion on the floor. Well, he, he can't so actually make the motion yet. Um, so you you'd like a motion to just to just wait? I'm not I'm not sure exactly what the uh, make a motion to approve what we got and which code? Which specific codes, plus? All of them. We have all of the uh, all of the amendments that we're going to make here mm -hmm. in red line. Um, so all the ICC set. Just all the ICC code. Except I E C C there you go and the energy portion of the IRC. Okay. And uh, have you considered just amending out the the IRC energy and using the energy code just the R there? Oh, could, certainly. And it's a redundancy, a right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. Or you know, or you do it the other way around, really. Yeah. But uh, but we we may do that if um, we may do that if they want us to move forward yeah I mean, say I, that again say. so in other words chapter 11 of the irc this lovely thousand page book is ripped out of another code the energy right. code is really two books it's the commercial code and then it has the residential but this back half this back 100 120 pages or whatever is essentially stuck into the irc I so on the off chance one of them said one thing versus another thing you want to consider tossing one so that there's not confusion. Why would they say separate things if they're pulled out of the same code? Typo? Stupidity. I mean, that's why they have the erratas and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I see. I was in, uh, just got into the IRC 24 today, and at one point it refers you back. Um, it was about like the termite section, and they, they used to have the map for the termites in with all the other R301s. Now they've moved that map back to like 318, but they still have the R302. You know, so when, when they get done, I mean, the first round of 24 is going to be just filled with errors. So when they do the second edition, I see. I see. It, it'll, have, it'll have lots of little fixes. So that's one of the reasons. Um, sure, but it's it, important to get the digital online premium. <laughs> yeah, for 800 bucks. <laughs> I don't think so. One of the interesting no, wrinkles here is because Bloss is dealing with this, with this um, possible That's delay to the IECC adoption, mm -hmm. the 24 IRC 
already has the energy codes for residential in there. Mm -hmm. So really, it's the commercial section of the IECC, which is delayed. That's a good way to put it. That That's included, correct. That included mm -hmm. IRC. They right. delayed the IRC because it was related to the yeah. in the energy. Code. Yeah, IECC. I'm, I'm just I'm pointing to the idea that you know you could you could either you could get either side depending on which way you want to bundle the packages of adoptions. Mm -hmm. You could you could you could. Um, Good point. Yeah, we could remove it out of here, yes, and then just take the IECC and apply that, or vice versa, right? You, since you already have it in the IRC, if it's more convenient to get a cleaner adoption that way, then you take the IRC into consideration and you only adopt the commercial section of the IECC when that comes. Anyway, it's neither here nor there. So, just can you recap for us again? It's um, okay, it's all the amendments, the, uh, the mundane amendments that we made to the existing amendments that we already have and approve the uh, ability to approve the IRC without those amendments because those amendments may not come till later. And that's where your idea of amending it out because we can't get to it. If City Council wants us to move forward on adopting the codes and waiting for the energy codes. So can we just say all of the ICC uh, amendments as proposed with the exception of any amendments regarding energy consumption or energy efficiency. Yeah. I move yeah. to adopt all of the proposed ICC amendments as written, excluding energy. Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good to go. Thank you. Okay. I'm leaving your hand. So we may we may we can be next year. I don't know. Do you have a timeline that you suspect? Hope. Well, if they let us, if they let us delay this, then it may no, it may not happen until uh, late next year. Possibly. <laughs> we go to council to ask direction on December tenth. Oh, so we'll know more then. Did you mention ADU section about ADU? You know, that's not part of that. Yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, we didn't, we didn't really propose an amendment to that, uh, but I did say that we probably will. Amend that. Did you know that? Do you guys understand that we will be and adopt the section 11? They prefer to the IRC. So it's an appendix? That's how we're going to go. We need to get these guys in trouble with the wagon. Oh, another code that I recently changed, which I thought would be. So I don't know about it. It's, it's just interesting because I, I don't know. It's just an interesting code. Um, E3405.1 New electrical panel doors only to open are cannot impede egress. So the egress has to be calculated or approved once those doors are open. They can't. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so so Blas is another amendment he'd like us to talk about, yes, or, or another adoption. Uh, Blas believes so. Clarify if I get this wrong. You're going to adopt the IRC's appendix on uh, ADUs. That's the intent. Um, we also have a meeting next week with the manager of the planning department to discuss the current ADU regulations in the land development code and how we can intermingle the appendix and um, our current adopted code. So it, uh, it wouldn't hurt my feelings to see, for selfish reasons at part, but uh, if, if the board got uh, um, your summary of the IRC, Changes and uh, definitely down the road, but it would be interesting to see what they're doing with the ADUs. Okay, is there is there a conflict here if if um, we steal this stuff? No, no. If we if we agree <laughs> if we agree that the appendix can be adopted, but then there's an existing local uh, ordinance. Regard, ordinance regarding ADUs. Land well. development. I mean, land, is it land yeah. development code? Are we? Are it's we? Our problem? No, no it's not our problem. Okay, yeah. that's, that's good. Yeah. I mean, All right. What's well, coding for? I, just to clear up, it does, exactly. does not more than 50% of the primer doing yeah. it is in the 
Um, is in the it is in the so, so in the appendix, it says, it says not more than fifty yeah, percent the primary, yeah. would, but that's regardless of whether, the area of the primary dealing. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't say that's, that's what I mean. So that should be so that's something that and that's in our that's in the IRC, but in our code, it's specifically detached. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but if we adopt this, then we're going to want to make you, sure you that. need to amend the appendix. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I understand. And now that means you got to come back board, right? Yeah. For now. So when do you anticipate the city council having their decision made? Well, we'll get the guidance. We were going to move in front of them November 12th, but that got pushed back to December 10th. Okay. Do you think it would be a good idea to meet after the first of the year just to review what they have decided? And, and if it makes any changes to anything else. Yeah. I mean, I think it would be yeah. ideal to yeah. do it in February. Okay. Because yeah, that will give us that. December and January. To do so we can go forward with the thing except for Chapter 11 there. Okay. Is that right? Is it chapter 11 that's coming out of that? Yes. And the other, the state electric code, right? Is that what they call it? The, well, the state low carbon. Low carbon. Well, we low have carbon. the state energy code, which if anybody wants a copy of that, copy it. Do the state? I have a thing. I have that already. Motion approved. Yeah, here. Move, we adjourn. Second it. Thank you. Thank you.